Hey guys, this is Colby. Today I'm going to show you how to model a medieval sword, a long sword with an image reference inside Blender. So let's get started. So the first step is to grab an image reference. So I'm going to grab a couple and I'll show you what they look like, what they look like in Blender here in a second. So once you have your images, go to front view, so press one on your numpad, press shift A, image reference. And I have like three references that it downloaded. So the more references you have, the better, because you can get a more like combined uh, sword. It's like not super copy, copied or uh, generic. You can get something that's kind of like unique. Combines aspects from different swords. So here's my second image reference, and here's my third. Let's move them back a little bit. Y-axis. And also, just make sure to save your file since we're just setting up a new scene. Uh, press Control S and then set your destination to wherever you want. And Control S is just a shortcut for saving your file. So I'm going to start with the hilts. So the handle piece right here. So press Shift A, create a cylinder. Scale it down a bit. Scale on the Z axis. So it's blue arrow. So S and then Z. Scale it up a bit. And let's go to this bottom face here. Scale it down a tad bit. And add a edge loop down the middle here and scale it up. So let's scale this down a bit again. Let's just get the right proportions. Don't want it to be too fat. It's uh, almost good. Uh, thing about hilts for long swords is that they're actually kind of like more of like an oval rather than a perfect circle. So let's scale it down on the y-axis a bit. It's like that. So they're not still round and they're more of like an oval shape. It's better for grip. Now let's add a subdivision service modifier. Make it look a little bit more curved. So add an edge loop up here and one down here. So press Control R. Just add in those faces. Let's add one up here. So just like this face here on the top, and just press E to extrude. Left click and then like scale down and then left click again, basically. So I'm gonna go back in object mode, shade this smooth. I might readjust this size a little bit. A tad bit larger. That looks a little bit better. Alright, so once you have your hilts, uh, let's go ahead and add another cylinder. So there's actually like a little like a ring. If you look at your reference on the hilts, so like this little ring right here. So for that, actually instead of the cylinder, I'm gonna add a torus. So mesh, add a torus right here. And let's scale in the y-axis a bit, match the shape of the hilts. Let's not make it too big, right? Just stick out. Just a tad bit. Looks good. So let's shade it smooth. There we go. All right, for the pommel, we're just going to create a cylinder and add a subdivision service modifier. So shift A, create a cylinder, scale down on quite a bit. Let's move down and rotate on the x axis 90 degrees. Move it down to scale it. Let's move it right about here. And let's just make sure it matches the width of the handle. Looks pretty good. So let's add a subdivision service modifier. And let's add some edge loops, like one right here. Control R and left click and just control R again. So I'd set the uh, the median point to the individual origin origins for now, because we're gonna basically extrude these faces and scale them down individually. Let's press E and then S and then left click. Looks pretty good. And so if you notice on the pictures, the pommel kind of sometimes has like a little like extrusion. Like it basically gets skinny and then it sort of sticks out a little bit. So I'll show what I mean by that. So let's grab one of these faces, press E to extrude. Let's move them on the Y axis. Right about here. Let's add an edge loop. So sharpen it 
and let's select this face and just extrude it and scale down to make it basically fix those shading problems. Let's do the same on the other side. Let's press E to extrude on the Y axis, outward, sharpen it, and then drag this face and press E then S and scale down a bit. And I'm going to try to make this a little more even. You could use the mirror tool to symmetrize it perfectly, but I think it looks fine. All right now, on to the guard. So let's create a cube. So Shift A, Mesh, Cube. Let's move it up right here. Scale out a bit. Let's go into edit mode. So add an edge down the middle and delete half of it. And add a mirror modifier. Turn on clipping. And as well, turn on subdivision service modifier. Actually, I might save that for later, but we're just going to basically start creating a shape from our reference. So I'm going to go with this image reference right here. I'm just kind of trying to follow it, mimic it a little bit. So let's go to front view and let's start extruding sideways. Let's grab this edge. Space, I mean, and it scale down a bit. Let's extrude outward again and scale it up a tad bit and extrude one more time and scale down. You can you know, make this smaller or skinnier if you want. This is a pretty large guard, so we need to scale it down quite a bit. Let's make it skinnier. And let's go into edit mode and just select these and make them a lot skinnier. Pretty much the fattest part should be this center piece here. The rest, like the tips, should actually be a lot smaller. Like that looks better. I might move this up a bit. Might add a curve to it. Like that. And let's turn on subdivision surface modifier. Let's extrude to this point. And make sure that this centerpiece here basically overlaps uh the guard i mean the hilts let's make it a little bit fatter set an edge up here and maybe like one here looks pretty good so far so i'm gonna make the centerpiece a little bit smaller to taper a little bit and make these a little bit wider There we go. So you can really make the guard look however you want it to be. So I'm just going to make it look like this. I think this looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to move on to the blade now. All right now, finally to the blade. So let's create a plane. I mean, a cube. So shift A cube. Let's move it up. Scale it down again. Let's move it right here. And let's make it skinnier. On the y axis. And let's go into edit mode. Let's drag this face. And let's drag it all the way up to make the length of the blade. That looks pretty good. Scale down a tad bit to make it a little bit of a taper. And finally, let's extrude one more time. Just press E and move it up. Scale down, and this will be the tip, the sharp point. Let's move it up quite a bit. Now it's out of bevel, so press Control R. Right here on the side of the blade. And let's scale it on the y axis a tad bit, or z x axis, I mean, to make that bevel. That looks pretty good. Let's make the point a little bit sharper, skinnier, I mean, like right there. That looks really good. So finally, we're going to add the fuller to the blade, which is this little hole in the sword. Like a little bit of an inward protrusion. So let's create a cylinder. Scale down a bit. And let's move it out of the way. Make sure it's not going too much through the sword. You want it to be just slightly touching it. Because that's essentially if he goes all the way through. It will just create an entire hole in the sword. Which is not what we want. So let's scale it up on the z-axis. Make it taller. Let's 
and let's move all the way up here. So I go into edit mode, drag this face. You can pretty much stop it wherever you want. But I might stop it like right here. And we need to round it off. So select this face, press E to extrude, move it up, scale it down, and let's do it again. So press E to extrude and scale it down. I might move this in a tad bit. Looks pretty good so far. So now go ahead and mirror the object, the cylinder, mirror it to the other side of the sword on the y axis. Press apply and let's add a Boolean modifier to the sword and set the object as a cylinder. Press apply. Now, if you move your cylinder out of the way, you have this hole in your sword. This looks pretty good so far. But once you shade it smooth, you'll start to see some problems, but you can fix that just by adding an edge split modifier. And there we go. All right, guys, that's the end of this video. If you enjoyed the video, just please like, leave a like and subscribe if you can. But anyways, I hope you all guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time.